In the last video, we defined the determinant of an n by n matrix, and in particular, there was a formula for it which summarized the slightly wordier explanation I gave, which is that the determinant of a matrix A is the sum over a set of n factorial choices of permutation uh, of the sign of the permutation, which is either plus or minus one, times a product of matrix entries, one from each row, so A1 and then sigma1 picks which column your entry is in, uh, A2, sigma2, all the way up to An, sigma n. So remember this is a, a product of matrix elements, one from each row, uh, satisfying the property that no two are in the same column, so that the sigma one sigma two up to sigma n is a permutation of one up to n. And you sum over all possible permutations. Okay, and the sign uh, was plus or minus one depending on whether you needed an odd or an even number of transpositions to get from the permutation back to the original ordering 1 up to n. In this video we're going to prove some properties of the determinant uh, which will prove very useful for computing it. So first of all, lemma, if two rows coincide, so they're the same numbers on two of the rows, Uh, then the determinant is zero. So for example, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, uh, 2, 4, 5 has determinant zero because the top row and the second row coincide. So the proof we're going to use this formula and some index notation. So let's see what it means for two rows to coincide in index notation. Well, let's say if row i and row j coincide, then that's saying a i k for any k is equal to a j k. Right in in row i the kth entry agrees with the kth entry in row j. When this happens, the terms in this sum up here for the determinant come in pairs. What are those pairs? Well, each term is something like sine sigma a1 something up to a i sigma i up to a j sigma j, etc. So I'm just going to write dots for the factors of a that I'm not using, I'm not interested in. So each term looks like this, and we have this identity that a i k equals a j k. So this factor here, uh, sorry, this uh, product here is equal to sine sigma dot dot dot. Nothing changes. Then a j sigma i dot 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 a i sigma j dot 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 using this condition that the rows coincide. But these factors are just numbers so we can commute everything past each other and we get a i sigma j dot 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 a j sigma i dot 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 and now we see this is another term in our sum but instead of corresponding to sigma this is um, 
sine sigma dot 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 a i sigma prime i dot 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 a j sigma prime j dot 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 where sigma j is the permutation which first or maybe I should say it sends um, i to sigma j it sends j to sigma i and it sends anything else to a sigma of so it sends k to sigma k for all k not equal to i or j okay so the dot dot dots are unaffected sigma and sigma prime agree for those factors but for these two they, um, sigma prime i is sigma j and sigma prime j is sigma i okay so this is this equality is true by definition of sigma prime so how many transpositions does it take to do sigma prime well first you do sigma and that takes a certain number of transpositions and then you do one further transposition and you swap sigma i and sigma j so sigma prime is um, sigma followed by uh, the transposition sigma i switches with sigma j so the sign of sigma prime is well it's the opposite of the sign of sigma because it's one extra transposition so if sigma was even then this sigma prime will be odd and vice versa so this is minus sine sigma so overall what we see is that for every term like this there's an opposite cancelling term where we replace sigma with sigma prime and the sign changes because of this equality here so every term has the same term in the determinant coming with an opposite sign so in total the term determinant is zero because all these pairs cancel So if two rows coincide, the determinant is zero. So this allows us to prove the first really crucial lemma, the really crucial property of how the determinant changes under row operations. So if um, a prime is obtained from a by the row operation ri goes to ri plus lambda rj then det a prime equals det a so this is incredibly useful because we can do any of these row operations here these type 1 row operations without changing the determinant so if we can row reduce our matrix using just these type 1 operations to something very very simple then maybe we can just read off the determinant that will be the trick so proof um, well debt a prime is some sine Sigma of what well there's a product of terms a prime one Sigma one dot 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 and then I'm going to keep track of uh, the, the ith row here because that's going to be the important one this is a prime i sigma i all the way up to a prime n sigma n okay we can say what these entries are so the first row second row etc are all the same as the rows of a except the ith row which is given by ri plus lambda rj 
So this is sig uh, sum of sine sigma a1 sigma 1 dot 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 and then ai sigma i gets replaced with ai sigma i plus lambda a j sigma i. dot 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 up to a n sigma n okay so let's multiply out the brackets here we get two things first of all is actually just the determinant of a and the second term is going to be lambda times um, something else so this is the determinant of another matrix here this guy this is the determinant of the matrix obtained from A by replacing the ith row with the jth row So um, this is the matrix whose first row is the first row of A, the second row is the second row of A. The ith row is now the jth row. Oops, that's supposed to be an R. The jth row is already the jth row. And then all the way down. And two of those rows are now the same, Rj and Rj. Right, so the ith row and the jth row of this matrix are equal so by the previous lemma this is zero this whole term here this term here is just by definition by definition the determinant of a so overall this is debt a okay so performing type 1 row operations like this adding on a multiple of row j to row i doesn't change the determinant so the reason this is so important is that we can put any matrix into echelon form using these type 1 row operations and when you're in echelon form your determinant is just the product of diagonal entries so example um, put a into echelon form Right, because the leading entries are always moving to the right, you always have something that has zeros below the diagonal. So the diagonal is some like um, A, B, C, etc. And below the diagonal we have zeros. It could be that some of the diagonal entries are also zero, but below the diagonal is all zeros. Um, and now, as we've said before, the determinant of something that's upper triangular like this, so that we don't know what's up here, it could be anything, the, but the determinant of something upper triangular like this is just the product of the diagonal entries. Because you have to pick this bottom right thing from the bottom row, and then you have to pick the next thing up uh, on the left from the next row up and you, you end up being forced to pick all the diagonal entries. So put A into echelon form then debt A is the same as, um, oh I should say put A into echelon form using type 1 row operations then debt A is unchanged so it's equal to the determinant of the echelon form which is just the product of diagonal entries. If you use other row operations, your determinant may change, but it, it changes in, in a relatively benign way. So, um, lemma, if uh, a 
prime is obtained from A by switching two rows. Say Ri goes to Rj and vice versa. Then det A prime equals minus det A. So you're allowed to switch rows as long as you keep track of the sign. So that every time you switch rows, you change the sign of the determinant. Um, and again, this is just because um, you know every term in uh, det A is something like sine sigma A. Uh, well, let's say A prime. Let's det A prime. A prime one sigma one up to a prime i sigma i up to a prime j sigma j up to a prime n sigma n and right if we just switch two rows all these other entries are the same so we can get rid of the primes except on i and j and uh, this a prime i sigma i is the same as a j sigma i and um, a prime j sigma j is a i sigma j. So again, this is equal to uh, sine sigma a one sigma prime one a um, i sigma prime i a j sigma prime j a n sigma prime n uh, where sigma prime is sigma followed by the transposition that sends sigma i to sigma j and vice versa and now this is just minus the sign of sigma prime Because there's one extra transposition, so the sign, uh, the signs change. So for every term in the determinant of a prime, there's a corresponding term in the determinant of a which occurs with the opposite sign. So overall, the sums are just uh, they differ by a minus sign. Finally, I'll just tell you how the determinant changes. if a prime is obtained from a by the operation ri goes to lambda ri well the determinant just rescales by lambda and you can prove this using index notation in exactly the same way as the other two uh, it's actually even easier if you just write out the definition of debt in next notation, the factor of lambda will just pull out to the front. So if you use these type 2 row operations, the determinant will change by whatever lambda you're using to multiply by. Okay, in the next video, we're going to use these lemmas to calculate the determinant uh, in a bunch of examples.